Yeah, well, that's where that one was when I shut it off the dark last night. And I think when that gets in, I'm going to take that opener in and see if I can't repack it. I have put a device to get it apart. I tried doing it up here once and couldn't get it apart. So, because as soon as, well, right now the shaft is shoved all the way up, the valve's only open two thirds or three quarters of a turn, but pressure's got the shaft shoved up, which is blocking it from leaking like a sieve. But as soon as you push it down, it sprays everywhere. So, let's see if I can rectify that situation. And, and get some angle to it. <clears throat> There's your sunrise. Pretty much mid-screen, I think, is where it's going to be. I don't know if you can see it or not. Neighbor's yard light's right there, too. Yep, there's neighbor's yard light. Almost looks a little ground fog. There it is. Just a little ground fog over that field. And that one's in farther than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. Well, I'll just have it at a better time to move for tomorrow. That's my plan anyway. So, new week. Got a new month coming up real soon. Let's just say both those can be better than last week. And I oh, can't see them. There's no way I'm going to zoom in on him to do it either. There's a few good sized birdies flying around this morning. I'm not sure what they are. It's, I can just see that they're there. Anyway, maybe we'll get something done today we were going to do last week. I don't know. Sorry, I didn't bring you along for the surgery. I always thought that was a packing nut. It's not. That's pipe thread into there. And double nutted to hold that on. There is an O-ring right there. That's the one that came out. Let's see if we can see it. Inside as flat as can be. If you can see that or not. I can kind of see it because I know it. This is a shiny spot on this side. It shows shiny because it's flat as can be. And the other neat trick is look at all those cracks. Ah, focus. In the great words of AVE focus, you fuck. Yeah. Oh, took me a while, but I actually had no ring. Um, replaced this nut because the bottom where it's threaded is recessed and you know however many years of water squirting up in there just rusted the hell out of it and I wasn't going to fight the other nut back on a brass shaft and ruin the shaft bad enough bad enough getting it off so that's ready to go back up I am going to see if I can find a find some stuff to make an adapter because our small traveler has the T and this is the nubbin and we made adapters to go from the hook to the T but none from the nubbin to the T so that's going to be kind of the next thing see if we got something to make it out of That's how we get them out. Sometimes you can roll them out. If it's a back gang, we can just back into the shop and roll it off because it all hangs out on the back. And without the front one being there, yeah, 
so it won't lift all the way up. And we got something screw with the damn hydraulics on that tractor again. We lifted that thing up off the stop. It didn't want to lift it up off the ground afterwards. So it's one of those. Fuck me, we've already been into that about three times. But it is what it is. Now I can set it in the shop and we can start at this end and take it all apart. Yay. Oh, and if you notice, I can't see on the screen, but on the red bracket at that end, that's for a scraper bar. There is a scraper bar on the back gangs. And they hold up all right. But where we use it for planting and we don't raise it on corners, and you you know, you don't have any straight fields here anyway. Um, we ended up making those brackets and putting a bar on there so that you've got the shaft, you've got the main beam, and you got that, so you got a three-point, which stiffens that whole thing up. Otherwise, you'll take bearings out right and left. So now I'm going to go set it in the shop, and we're going to start taking it apart. Well, there's that far. That's the good bearing, by the way. Yeah, it was a little loose. And uh, ended up cutting the lock collar off. And ended up having to split the bearing. Cut it with a cut off. And a few, a few good hits with the chisel spreads them enough, they slide off. And things are still warm enough. I'm not grabbing that shim yet. I slid it out that far, but I ain't going to hold on to it. So the next step is the shim goes and lays right over there with that or with the yeah with the flanges and those come off one at a time and lay down exactly how they come off till we get to the next bearing which is the one that is toast and that bracket will probably slide right off and then I'll just have the center brace of the bearing to cut out and then we do it again to get to the other one at the other end but I think we're just going to see if there's no slop in that one. We may leave it. <clears throat> Although the bad thing is it goes out next and then you got two brand new bearings right here you got to cut off. So, it's just more fun. If they really want some balls, there's a whole bunch of them laying here on the floor. A little greasy. But, you know, they'll, they'll clean up. We could raffle them off, right? Oh, yeah. Those two have been mostly working on that thing again. Haven't found where the leak's coming yet. So, I don't know. It's old. It's got 10 million plus miles on it, I'm sure. And has never had anything done to it. Like I said the other day, other than a few starters. Smile, Becky. Her phone's being a pain in the ass. Last few days she's had trouble. She can't call anybody until she plays with her phone. Kind of like my phone's been doing, but at least I can work around it and call people. She can't call without restarting her phone. And she just tried it again so she can call and complain to Sprint or whatever the hell it is now. T-Mobile, I guess. And uh, it all happened when her phone did a forced update. Same as when mine did. What do you know? So, anyway... Yeah, I don't know how far I'm going to get on this today. I'm about what? The inherent issues with these things. They get full of dirt between the shaft and the roller. And uh, she's still trying to figure out what she wants to use to get it out of there with. It's just like somebody poured a babbit bearing in there. The, the worst part's getting the first few over the end of the shaft. Once you get that done, it's not too bad. She actually slid that one right off. The first one I had to blow air behind it and get as much crap out as I could. And then I took the second one and slammed into it and finally got it out. I blew a bunch of air behind the second one and took that one and slammed into it. Then she walks over and slides that one right off. Go figure, huh? Yeah. Well, you can see the pile right there by her knees. It's all just... It flakes out. Let's look at that. Another one slid off. But let's see if we can see the inside. 
It looks like it's worn. It's not. That's dirt packed in there. It's worn too. I think how long this one's been around. I think 04, maybe. I know, I see a little. Might have been 01. I don't remember. It's on the back of the. It's on the hitch I put on the back of the cultivator because I dated it. We couldn't use it before I put the hitch on, so that's when we got it. And if you look at the shaft, that was from one of the last times we did bearings. Had to get a little deep with that. Just, that's, you got stuff in the way, that's the only way you can do it. Go on an angle and you end up going into the shaft a little bit so you can cut through far enough to get it to break. But she's finding now that these in here, they're packed a little harder. And something I did on one, see if it'll work on this one. If the edges of this will catch it, they won't catch it. It just flaked it right out. Worked pretty good. But anyway, takes time. When all goes back together, they will all slide right on. We may have to hit that with some more emery because there's two bearings that have to slide over that before we get this end done. No, there's two that slide over before we can get this done. There's three total. She'll learn her math one of these days. I, I give her a break. She she went to banks. <laughs> I'm still firing on all cylinders. Yeah. Y'all know it's been rough. Rough last week. Rough weekend. Literally, after I get off work, I sit in the freaking bathtub for like two and a half hours crying my eyes out. So, that's how it looks. A shrivel old prune. That's what it's like. I don't give a shit when I'm on the time I'm done. Anyway, so. Yeah. Fun. And I'm sure there's somebody. Oh man, I can do that whole job in 10 minutes. Yeah. I've done this whole job in the field in less time. I've done this whole job on another machine right here in front of the shop in two and a half days. Is the first roller. The dirt was so packed and the shaft was so worn that uh, well, I almost ended up cutting the roller off. That's where we learned about fluid film. Fluid film and some heat that finally boiled some of the dirt out enough to get it to go. And uh, I don't know how many times we reground the end of the shaft because the only thing we could do was beat on it with a sledgehammer. Had it up in the air hanging on the skid steer, and I was standing on the forks beating on it. Then heat some more and then beat oh, on so it. Come out too bad. There's still just a wee bit. Then heat some more and beat on it. Perfect little pile of flakes. Yeah, look at that nice little pile of flakes. I take them all off and lay them the way they were, and then they're back where they were. Because they're all, they're not only worn to the shaft, they're worn to each other. I just, you know, like to keep it that way. If you had to put a new one on, well, it, you end up putting a new one on somewhere. But the other key to these things is you get everything on there and you get it tighter than tight. That way you don't have a, any slop before you hit the bearing on the preload. Because the, the inside race of the bearing doesn't have much pressure on it. But if there's slop and the things can move, that's beating sideways on the bearings every time you turn a little bit. And yeah, well, that's probably enough in five minutes now. That's enough for a video, and it's almost that time anyway. So, hope you all had a good Monday. Oh, found out something else today, too. Martine was here to pump the tank at the trailer. And uh, he ended up going up to Seattle on Saturday. I think he said when he got into the shop Saturday, or after he left, maybe one of the guys at the shop called him and said that their boss died. So that's kind of interesting. It affects him, and, well, I told him God works in mysterious ways because he was having issues with his boss and he was going to leave the company anyway, and maybe now he'll stick around. I don't know. But either way, you know, thoughts and prayers to his boss's family and, of course, to all the employees. Whether they liked him or not, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm just going to chill out and watch her keep chipping.